I'm happy to welcome my next guest to the show. Natalie Newell is the co-host of the Science Enthusiast podcast, and she's also the director and producer of the upcoming film Science Moms, a film that explores what happens when you pit conscientious, scientifically literate mothers against a multi-billion dollar industry trying to retard their scientific literacy and replace it with non-GMO, gluten-free stupidity. Natalie, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. And um, that was the best introduction I can imagine. And I need to, um, I don't know, transcribe that and put that on my social media somewhere because you you just wrote the description of my film way better than I ever could. So <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get, uh, we'll get Heath and Eli on it. We'll put 30 seconds on the clock and we'll come up with something great for you. Oh, I'm right. super stoked. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So now I've got to, I got to be the devil's advocate here. Got to put on my skeptical hat and grill you okay. a little up front because- okay. I generally like to take health advice from people with proper qualifications, like, for example, uh, partial education at the University of California, a blog named after unpleasant semi-fluid matter, and a decreasingly important role in the Iron Man franchise. So why should I listen to anything that you have to say on the subject? See, this is the thing, right? Because I, I know I know that the, you know, we all just want to listen to Gwyneth, right? We want to listen to Goopy Gwyneth Paltrow about health advice. Um, and, you know, why not? Because she clearly has a lifestyle website and likes to talk about putting things in your vagina that you probably shouldn't put in your vagina. But so I'm, I'm going to provide a little bit of an alternative to that in that I think maybe you're not even going to take health advice from me because I'm not I'm not the expert here. So what I'm trying to do is offer some some women who actually know what they're talking about, women who are scientists, science communicators who have, you know, done a little bit more than than make goop or bullshit. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I, that was the thing is this movie, I'm not I'm the director, producer, whatever, but I'm letting these other women who are way smarter than me about these topics like GMOs, vaccines, real medicine versus, you know, alternative medicine. I'm letting them tell the story because they know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Uh, unlike the steamed vagina expert, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, yeah. so, so what can you tell us about uh, about the contributors to the film? So in the movie, we have, um, I have five women, Coven Synapathy, Alison Bernstein, Jenny Splitter, Anastasia Bodner, and Layla Kateri. And they are a group of women who I, I found on a blog called Grounded Parents. They had written this open letter to celebrity moms when the when a lot of the you know just label it anti-gmo stuff was going around um they wrote this open letter pretty much saying like ladies you're we're moms too and let's talk science let's not talk fear and they hashtagged the whole thing moms for gmos and i just thought it was brilliant because it was different you know mm. like the narrative around parenting and food and medicine and all of that it's it's steeped in anecdotes and fear mongering and lacking a little bit of evidence. So to have this letter written by women who are, you know, geneticists and biologists and, you know, and people who have actually written on these topics of, of health and food and all of that was different and really refreshing for me. So I, I reached out to them and I mean, I found that they're just as awesome, you know, in person and on camera as they were in this open letter. And I just, I really, I really got lucky with yeah, this group I, of women. It, it was really engaging. And one of the things that I really liked about it is if you compare it to other like science documentaries, when you had scientists on screen, you didn't science them up, right? There's no lab yeah. coats, no beakers, no three dimensional yeah. spinning brain graphic in the background <laughs> for no reason. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that was a conscious decision. Uh, it, 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 can you tell us why uh, you didn't like, you know, kind of dress them up in the accoutrements of, uh, of, of um, authority there? Because they're, they're real people. They're, mm -hmm. And I think that we need to, we need to humanize the science and not just make it about, you know, here's somebody in a lab coat reading facts and data points. It's people that you, you know, you see maybe in, the school parking lot when you're dropping off your kids or just people that you are, you know, hanging out with, having a drink some night. It's, you know, they're real people. And I didn't think that we needed to, you know, turn them into a stereotype of a scientist to get the message across. Um, I think that part of effective communication about anything is making the person providing the information, make them approachable. 
And mm-hmm. I feel like, and that was, you know, these women are just approachable on their own. So it was just me having conversations with them about these topics. And, you know, I d- we didn't need to science them up. I think they, they're, the words spoke for themselves and yeah, we didn't have to, didn't have to dress them up. Well, and lab coats. Can't, can't you just tell who's telling the truth to you by that, right? Because like I've, I watch, of course, a lot of these terrible uh, pseudoscience documentaries and mm-hmm. creationism documentaries. And anytime they've got anyone who has anything like a PhD, they're going to put them in a lab coat, put a pocket protector on them, give them every symbol of authority, intellectual authority that they possibly yep. can. You know, have a computer on the in the background running random numbers or something like that, and and yet when you see people who are telling the truth, it's just like you know, yeah, sitting in the the kitchen having a conversation. Um, but there definitely was this feeling of like these are my friends, these are my coworkers, these are the ladies at my gym, you know, et cetera. Um, and I think that probably makes it a lot easier to take uh, for what I assume to be your uh, your target audience. So uh, l- let me do away with the assumption: who is your target audience? You know, I mean, the target audience, I think it started out to me as, okay, let's make a movie, you know, for for parents, current parents, prospective parents, you know, but I think that even though that's that was the initial target, I think that it is a film that could reach people who don't have kids too and just need to and just want to get a little bit more information about some of the myths surrounding food and medicine and all that. Um, But I think that the, you know, the biggest target audience is people who are questioning the decisions that they're making for and about their children. Because there, I mean, parents worry about everything. And right. and there and which of course you have this small human that you need to keep alive. And you and on top of that, you know, just try to help them grow into, you know, the best person possible. And there are just things that, you know, perhaps they shouldn't be as worried about. So I'm I'm hoping to reach an audience that can benefit from that and that, okay, they can alleviate some of their fears. But I do think that the film, you know, after, after spending a little time at an atheist convention over the past weekend and noticing that there's a little bit of scientific skepticism lacking in Mm -hmm. even that community too, um, I would like to be able to take this film to that audience as well, you know, because I think that the critical thinking piece is there, you know? And so I think that, you know, there's, there could be a benefit beyond just parents, but people who maybe, you know, can, can learn and and challenge their own beliefs about some of these issues. Or perhaps people who know parents. I mean, like, like literally the whole time I'm watching this, I'm thinking of all the people that I just want to strap into a clockwork orange chair and force to watch this film. Like, like there are probably multiple people I'm going to go like offer to go to church with if they agree to watch your movie with me afterwards. Ooh, I like that. I, I, I'm so, I'm so into that. You will go, you'll go to church for science moms. That that's a whole campaign we can make. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, and but see, that's a that's a big thing for me because I cannot be super convincing in these instances because I don't have kids, and yeah. you know, there's a there's sort of an inherent prejudice, and, and some of it's a prejudice, and some of it's just legitimate that when a non-parent starts, you know, spouting off their opinions on how to raise your kids, you you shut down a bit. Um, so to have a, a resource like this that I can turn people to, to and say, no, look here, you got legitimate scientists with nothing here to gain, but telling you the truth, you know, obviously we all know there's a lot more money in fear mongering than fear alleviation. So you're obviously not in it for the money. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. The other side of the aisle has, so they have kind of this money and power that goes along with their message. And so, I mean, well, fear sells a lot more than, than somebody's kind of saying like, well, don't be scared. I mean, I, cause I love, I love shitty movies. I love, terrible movies. And I've watched some of the bad science ones. And oh my God, I just watched What the Health the other day. I've watched Vaxxed. I've, you know, watched GMO, OMG. And oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, it's, it's terrible, but in the best, worst way possible. You know, like it, I was yelling at my TV and texting my friend, Miles Power, who also watches bad science movies. Like it's so bad. But um, those kind of movies, like, there's money behind that kind of stuff oh, yeah. because it's it's the narrative that sells. And so this is like, I feel like Science Moms in a way is sort of the anti-vaxxed because we're just kind of like, yeah, get your kids vaccinated, um, feed your children a healthy, balanced diet. 
Like, yeah, it's not that complicated. Right. And, and obviously parents don't want to believe it could possibly be that easy, right? Without mm -hmm. stopping and considering the fact that human beings have been successfully raising kids since the very beginning. <laughs> right. You know, obviously. Right. It's so, like we're looking for reasons to make it more difficult. And it doesn't need to be like that. Well, yeah. And like you said, there literally are people who make their living looking for those reasons. Yeah, I, I just I always loved the irony of the fact that the organic food lobby, the organic food industry, let's just say, mm -hmm. you know, they sell this message that, hey, there's this multi-billion dollar food conglomeration that's trying to lie to you and take your money. And it's like, well, it only became true when you said it, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. are that. Um, now, I should say, like, the, the film touches on a lot of subjects, which by necessity means that you don't go, like, deep dive right. into, into anything. You touch on GMOs, alternative medicine, organic foods, vaccinophobia, homeopathy. Um, it, was there a temptation to, like, narrow in on one thing? Was there a temptation to focus on, like, even more things? Uh, and how did you choose, like, those subjects? You know, those seemed to be the ones that were coming up most in discussion. I mean, just from from things that I experienced in my own life as a parent. So I have I have two young children. I have a two year old and a four year old. And I was just thinking, what are these topics that I keep hearing about a lot? And then with the women, we kind of zeroed in on the food and the medicine. And honestly, when I set out to make this movie, I was thinking, oh, let's, you know, maybe a 10, 15 minute thing that I throw on YouTube somewhere and you know, just kind of highlight them and their letter focus more on maybe just GMOs. But it definitely became more as the process went on and I was seeing the response um, and questions that were coming up as as I was making the film. But these were things I mean, I had I worked in education for a decade. And when I first had my children, um, I my son was crying and I was at a school event. and Someone asked me if I would take him to a chiropractor because maybe that would help. Oh, wow. Oh, this was my real life. And I, because I was the school principal. So I had to like be very polite when I said, nope, and just <laughs> walk away. Um, I had people in in the school who, who didn't vaccinate their children and mm -hmm. were able to sign a religious exemption in the state of Maryland. Um, I had somebody tell me that we should only serve organic food as snack at the school um, because it was healthier. Great use of your finite I, so, resources, yeah. Right, right. So that was that that would have been fantastic. Um, yeah. So these were these were things that I was experiencing, and then just I think I kind of wanted to find out the answers for myself to the like for myself to these th these questions people had for me or these things that were trying to be pushed on me. And it was kind of nice to find kindred spirits who were like, yeah, um, you know, the organic food is not going to be better for the students or holy fuck. Like somebody said, take your child to a chiropractor. Right. It's, yeah, that's terrifying. The, the, don't crack people's backs, especially babies. I mean, let's just put that out there. But this is the world that exists. And these are the things that people are doing. And I feel like any any little bit that that I can do that you know we can do to put out a different message is worth it. So that's why the movie did end up touching on a bunch of things rather than just kind of this moms for GMOs concept because mm -hmm. I think that some of the medical stuff is I mean I I would like to almost do more of that at some point I think because there's some real bullshitty stuff out there. Yeah, well, I mean, this could just as easily be a, a weekly half hour show yeah. and, and you, you, yeah. you'd be able to keep going for several years. And oh, I think, yeah. you know, I, I think ultimately I agree with the approach. There were things that as I'm looking at, because I'm so steeped in these pseudoscience arguments that as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, oh, but, you know, the true believers in GMOs are going to point this and this out and you don't touch on that. But of course, you can't reach everybody. And, and like you said, the people yeah. that you're looking for, the people who are who are questioning and wondering, I mean, you know, there's a woman in the film uh, at some protest that's screaming yes. about how she cure, she's cured five diseases that science can't cure. I'm like, yeah, no movie's necessarily going to get through to that lady. No. Um, but but to her friend, you know, who who she's spewed all of her nonsense on, yeah, just maybe. Right. It's I think that in a lot of these conversations, it's about meeting the people who are kind of in the middle, because really, you're you're I'm not going to change the minds of the people who are seriously convinced on Twitter that I'm some Monsanto shill 
for even making this, you know, super, super low budget documentary, um, I'm not going to convince them that GMOs are, are okay. I'm never going to reach the fervent, like anti-vax crowd that is mm-hmm. convinced that Andrew Wakefield was right. I'm, those are not the people that are going to be, you know, swayed or convinced by really much of anything because those beliefs are so de- like deeply held, but it's the on the fence people who can maybe sway one way or the other. I'm mm-hmm. hoping, you know, because, hey, if you can if you can reach somebody or change somebody's mind or make them feel a little bit better about not going the whole crazy fear-based route, then I think, I think that's a success. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm still amazed how often I talk to people who, you know, when, when the subject of homeopathy comes up, they have no idea what it is. They just sort of have a yeah. vague notion in the back of their mind somewhere that, it, that it's healthy or that it's natural or, or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Well, natural, because natural is good for you, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all, natural is good. And, you know, natural remedies, um, water with memory, wh- whatever yeah. it is, it, there's, there's so much natural stuff that's, that's fantastic for you. But, but it, people just don't always know. And it's right. marketed so well that how how would you know unless you kind of question and dive a little bit deeper into it and yeah. not just, you know, Google University research, but but have real conversations and go to real sources for things. Yeah. And try to disprove your preconceived notions here mm-hmm. and there as well. That's always yeah. important. Uh, well, I am depressed to hear that you are not a Monsanto shill. I was kind of hoping for a kickback for this interview, but apparently I, I'm fucked I know, yet again. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. But if I ever, you know, get in with that, I'll send you a briefcase of money or something, however they do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I know, I'm sure that's it. <laughs> um, all right, so did, uh, w- w- was putting a movie together as easy as it looks? Well, I mean, I, I did not actually edit the film myself. I have a fantastic editor who did that. Mm-hmm. But the process of going and filming and interviewing these women was just was an awesome excuse to travel to different parts of the country and hired fantastic um, directors of photography in each place. And I mean, I have to say that that process was just really wonderful to just get to meet these people and have these conversations. And then I was fortunate to have a success, like successful Kickstarter campaign for it too. Oh, really? um, yeah. So that was, that was really awesome to see the support for it. Cause this, like the film has had a, bit of a so like social media presence for a little while now. So, you know, just trying to spread the word about what it is and just provide a place on the internet for a little bit of reasonable parenting type of discussion. So the process has been, it's, it's a long process, obviously, but it's so close and will be shown in some places in the fall, which I'm really excited about. Awesome. Awesome. All yeah. right. So a, a penultimate question, not counting follow-ups here in a nutshell, what do you hope your audience walks away from uh, from the movie with? I hope that they walk away maybe changing some of the beliefs that they had before or at least spurring a little bit of critical thinking. Because I think that, you know, these are issues that a lot of people have strong feelings about. And if they walk away thinking, you know, let me try to reevaluate some of my maybe preconceived notions or, you know, beliefs about some of these myths, then, then I think, you know, just getting people to think. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Because like you say, I mean, you know, look, the, the only kind of parents that aren't terrified of everything and questioning everything that they do are terrible, terrible parents. Uh, but when it comes down to it, rationality and reliance on the best available science, that's what you owe your kids. You know, not not the the latest Gwyneth Paltrow get healthy quick scheme. All right, so the the movie is not out yet, like you said. Um, but I hear you got recent word on when and where it would have its uh, like red carpet grand opening. Red carpet grand opening. Well, I it will be shown in two different places in October. And today, I just got word from our friend Marsh that it'll be shown at QED in awesome. Manchester, which I'm super stoked about because QED is. I mean, you were there last year. Uh, amazing, amazing conference. And then in the U.S., the first, like, I guess, big showing will be at um, PsyCon in Vegas and at the end of October. So those are two that are, you know, kind of premieres in locations, but I am working on other showings. And I think 
I want to see it as a little bit of a grassroots effort too. I will, I want to try to find ways for people to get the film, get their hands on the film and show it in their own local places too, because Mm -hmm. it's not, obviously it's not about money. It's not about any of that. It's just about spreading a message of critical thinking and rational thought. Awesome. Awesome. Well, just keep us updated as, uh, as it becomes available on different sources. We'll keep the, uh, the audience updated as well. And of course, we'll have links on the show notes to all of the, uh, all of the uh, venues that were just mentioned, along with links to the Science Enthusiast podcast. Uh, Natalie, thanks for the work that you're doing. And thanks again for your time this evening. Thank you so much.